International Conference celebrates 50 years of Karabi Youth Festival. The much-anticipated International Conference commemorating 50 years of the Karabi Youth Festival kick off today at the Arboretum Kam Crop Center in Difu Karabi Yanglong, Assam. The two-day event, Team the Celebration of Resistance, Identity and Culture, is organized by the Caribbean Lotharmas Council in association with the Center for Caribbean Studies, Assam University, Deep Campus. The conference began on a deeply spiritual note with the traditional Karbi Bongchinar Nam Kipu Puja, seeking blessings from the Almighty to mark the beginning of the proceedings. This was followed by the inauguration of the event and a significant book launch ceremony by Dr. Tli Ram Rong Hang, Honorable Chief Executive Member of Karbian Long Term Mass Council, who also served as a chief guest of the conference. The meeting was chaired by Sri Surja Rongpar, Executive Member of Karbian Long Term Mass Council in charge of Arts and Cultural Affairs, Family and Health Department. Sri Rongfar emphasized the importance of maintaining in Karbi culture and heritage through consistent efforts like the Karbi Youth Festival, which has played a pivotal role in preserving the identity of the community for the past 50 years. A highlight of the conference was the launch of the book The Myth History of Kajirong Hampi, The Making of Kajiranga National Park, edited by Dr. Dharam Singh Teron and Professor Vuli Dhanaraju and published by Manohar Publishers, New Delhi. The book dwells into the historical and cultural aspect surrounding the creation of the Kajiranga National Park, a significant landmark in the region. Dr. Tuliram Ronghang, in his address, lauded the efforts of the editors for bringing this important work to the public and highlighted the intervened history of the Karabi people and the park. Following the book launch, a series of speech and academic presentation took place. Professor Y.A. Sudhakar Reddy for the University of Hyderabad delivered the keynote address focusing on the importance of cultural resistance and identity in preserving indigenous traditions. His address set a tone for the issuing discussion around the role of festivals like KYF in nurturing the cultural roots of the Karbi community. Dr. Dharam Singh Teron, director of the Center for Karbi Studies, extended a warm welcome to all the guests and participants, emphasizing the significance of the KYF in strengthening Karbi identity and promoting cultural pride. He also expressed hope that the conference would bring forward meaningful dialogue use on cultural preservation. Center for Karbi Studies and Chief Advisor to the Honorable CM of Karbi Yang Lothermas Council. Delivered an insightful speech on the socio-political implication of the Karbi Youth Festival and how it continues to inspire the younger generation to stay connected to their roots. Professor Sivasis Biswas, Vice Chancellor of Assam University Defo Campus, also addressed the gathering as guest of honor. He underlined the university's commitment to academic research that contributes to the cultural heritage of the region and lauded the efforts of the organizers in bringing together such a distinguished panel of scholars. Professor Vuli Dhanaraju, the coordinator of the conference, gave an introductory speech setting the academic framework for the discussions. He highlighted the importance of academic engagement with cultural practices and emphasized how such initiatives help in documenting and preserving indigenous knowledge system for future generations. The event promises to be a scholarly celebration of Karbi culture, bringing together renowned national and international experts. Speakers and research persons include prominent figures like Dr. Michael Hannesis from UIT, the Arctic University of Norway, Dr. Willem van Skendel from the University of Amsterdam, Dr. Ino Wigand from the International Studies Association, Dr. Claire Sutherland from Durham University, and Dr. Margaret Linda from the University of Waikato. As the first day of the conference draws to a close, participants are eager for more discussion and insights into the rich heritage and identity of the Karbi people. The event will continue tomorrow, exploring topics of resistance, identity and cultural preservation in greater depth. Karbi Youth Festival in Kan Pokyev Kitcho, in Sengkelen and in Kan Laso, in Taitung Talon Ponel, Laso and in Kan Kehok Ponel, Karbi Yang Autonomous Council, La Penke, Asam University Campus, La Penke, 
study for Kirby. Lah so aku dah ikut celang rapet dan si lah dah ke si workshop si B lah pen. Lah so workshop yang international mana kape kape kat country kan dapat spin tu kita dan video conference pen. Lah pen lah sama long pen cenglo India long pelik pelik university schoolers pen cenglo white cenglo kita tu pro. Profesor, lecturer pun dapat spin sendiri. Nanti kita kajian long tapi pindah ni intellectual pun kita kini pergi spin sendiri. Nanti daily tu culture, mungkin tu orang kita juga birthday hari dia long kapi lagi tu dia pun sendiri. Kajian long pun masuk sendiri. Nanti kita pergi pun sendiri. Kang Pulau, Kang Pulau. Nikon Farman, sir. Alis sila. Sir, lapen Ethereum, sir. Tala class boycott 131 teachers tu tuh pan. Kau sila rilang. 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 Kau sila Okay, okay. So I'm very happy to share you that Karbiang Lang Autonomous Council is going to celebrate today's international conference on 50 years of Karbi Eid Festival, the celebration of resistance, identity and culture during 19th and 20th of September at Arboretum Kham Prab Center, Dipu, Assam, Karbiang Lang, India. So I'm uh, very happy to share you that Karbiang Lang Autonomous Council has taken uh, right step to, for the documentation of Karbi history, culture and identity. So under this uh, uh, task, so we are uh, conducting this seminar to document 50 years of Karbi festival. As you all know, recently COP has completed 50 year celebrations, but uh, this conference main objective is to document uh, the voices and unheard uh, culture and identities which have been marginalized for the last uh, several years. So this conference will emphasize and give importance to documentation of the uh, personalities, organizations and different uh, uh, leaders who contributed to, for the strengthening of Karbi culture and identity and resistance. So in this conference we have uh, 65 delegates uh, coming from different parts of the world going to speak on different themes which are associating with the conference so main theme. So today our Honorable CM Dr. Tuliram Ronghang uh, inaugurated the uh, conference. So after this now we are going to have a technical sessions. These all technical sessions will be delivered by different uh, resource persons, speakers and eminent scholars from different uh, disciplines. So this conference, uh, I hope this conference will give new perspective and dimension for the documentation of Karbi, culture, identity and other folklore, etc. Yeah. So, uh, another important thing, on this occasion, uh, Karbi Anglang Autonomous Council has uh, conducted uh, one international conference on Kajir Rangongpi in 2023. Now that conference volume is coming up in form of book, so, in the name of uh, the myth story of Kajir Rangangpi, the as you all know, Kajir Rangangpi is a memory of the Karbis, oral tradition of the Karbis, but unfortunately, this memory and uh, oral tradition has not to be recognized, has not been documented. So, that is the reason. So, myth history of Kajir Rangangpi book has been published by international publishers Manohar. So this book uh, is edited by uh, uh, I and Dr. Dharam Singh Taran, as you, know, as you all know, Dr. Dharam Singh Taran has been working on Karbi oral history and folklore for several years. Now this book also will give a new dimension to Kajiranga National Park. As you all know, so Kajiranga National Park is a place where the so many Karbi settlements uh, are there. But unfortunately, so those settlements, those territories are not part and parcel of Karbi land. Because still there is a memory, there is a tradition with the people who are living beside Kajiranga National Park. So now this book will give a new perspective dimension to Kajiranga National Park through the memory of Kajir Rangangpi.
No, this is very good occasion that uh, Kabi Youth Festival is having the Golden Jubilee celebration and this is an, going to be an inspiration to other areas of North East India as well as outside North East India that youth should contribute positively for the development of society, culture and having the identity because today in globalization we are losing our identity, our dress, our culture, our diet. So some emphasis will be there where we are rooted in our culture and youth have to play a significant role in this regard. So to organize such an uh, international conference, I congratulate the Darby Youth and Darby Autonomous Council officers and everybody that they are taking such an initiative and providing a platform to the people of this region to work ahead and go further. This is another area of youth to learn how to learn उन्नति होगा कैसे उसका विकास होगा उसका कल्चर को बचाना है उसका संस्कृति को बचाना है उसका भाषा को बचाना है उसका ड्रेस को बचाना है वो खत्म हो जाएगा तो बहुत खत्म हो जाएगा सॉरी आई एम प्रोफेसर एके ठाकुर फ्रॉम नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न हिल to share with the wider world, you know, the broader people in other parts of the state of the region and of the country also, to let us know more about the Karbi people. And in that sense, I congratulate the Karbi Autonomous District Council for holding this kind of meeting, international meeting in the West. So that information about the Karbis, their culture, their traditions can be disseminated to a much wider group of people. This is the way we we help to retain our identity and, and culture. So I'm very happy to be here to learn more and also share what little we, we know as well. Thank you. Ma'am, you're a good man. I'm Professor Mauro from Northeastern Hill University. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings to you, Cardo. So, so this conference uh, focus on the celebration of Renaissance identity and culture. Right. So can you elaborate on the role that culture Renaissance has played in shaping the identity of the Karbi people? Right? Yeah, yeah. Resistance, Resistance uh, played in shaping the identity of the Karbi people over the past five decades. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a very good question. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Resistance basically comes when there is a domination from outside. Like it could be a state or it could be the central, whatever it is. So resistance come when you feel that you are neglected, your identities are not actually taken care of, nor even, you know, people think that you are something marginalized, you have no place to live in and so on and so forth. So resistance do come when there is a kind of this. In this case of Karbis, what I heard is that it has come because of the Assamese language being imposed. Language is one of the major areas, right? So our thought process is revealed through language. So language constructs our thought process. And if it is not done equal on equity, equity ground of uh, the Assamese, then you may tend to lose the entire thought process itself. Right? Therefore, one has to resist. Karbi's thinking and worldview are different from that of the others. And one has to hold that. In order to hold that, one needs, needs to actually have what is known as you know resistance and that's how the movement started with the that is the immediate cause we call that in history as immediate cause immediate over the period of time there were innumerable kinds of you know people ignoring uh, uh, the, the corbis and then not caring for them not even given proper position within the social system so on and so forth they are treated something like primitive forest and so on and so forth so in that sense, in that uh, milieu, this resistance has come up. Once that resistance has come up, the resistance normally can take into insurgency and rebellion and revolt, which will cost several lives. But the beautiful thing that the Karbis have done is, is through a peaceful means, like a Gandhian kind of movement, they have converted this into a cultural identity. And these cultural performances 
of Karbis are distinct from the others and they wanted to project their thought process through, through their cultural idea, I mean performances in order to prove that they are a distinct and identifiable group, a, a lot of group. Mm -hmm. In that sense, uh, it has uh, caused KYFS come up. Yes. So thank you, sir. And then my next question is, uh, with the involvement of an international audience, uh, what are your expectations from this conference in terms of promoting Karbi culture beyond regional and national boundaries? Yes, definitely this, this is crossing the boundaries of not just DIFU, it is crossing even the Indian boundaries. With the international audience, what happens normally with the international audience is that once you get this identity at the international level, the others will come to know what you have done to your own community, how you have really played a role in creating an identity. Several cultures in abroad, they, are, they don't have this uh, consciousness at all. They are dying. Simply they are being you know, absorbed, absorbed by the, the dominance, so-called cultural dominance. Globalization has done a lot of damage for such communities because the same kind of food which is uh, supplied in the so-called, they call what is that, Kentucky Fried Chicken, KF, C, KFG and all is treated, treated as their main uh, stream. But this particular cultural group projected that it is a different, distinct and therefore they remain with their own what is known as customs and traditions that now is going to be studied by the abroad. The people who are actually looking at your this thing, they make it to a models so that it becomes a model for the other communities to raise up to the same kind of level and their identities can be shown to the public and to the world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And my last question. Uh, are there any plans uh, to document or publish the outcomes of this conference for future reference or educational purpose? Yes, definitely. I think the organizers are thinking and it is can be shown to the public and to the world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And my last question. Uh, are there any plans uh, to document or publish the outcomes of this conference for future reference or educational purpose? Yes, definitely. I think the organizers are thinking in terms of publication. They, you will find a lot of 65, I mean, participants are there. You find all of their papers being present. Not necessarily all 65, they will again standardize. They have to, you know, create a kind of a standard for publication that they are going to look into. The organizers are very keen in bringing out the standard publication so that the corpus will get their identity proper. If anything, a paper which actually doesn't reflect the corpus identity only talks blah blah like theory, it, does, it is not going to have help the others. Therefore, they are very particular in publishing the ones which actually represent the corpus culture. Thank you. So where are you from? I am from University of Hyderabad, Hyderabad, Telangana state. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Newsdex Report, Northeast Karbilai.